Hello guys, so this is going to be a lecture video on financial life hacks that I've been talking about throughout the year. So let's open up the notes. Now I have emailed you these notes, um, so I suggest that uh, when you watch the video that you open up the notes, that way you could kind of scan through it uh, beforehand and then watch the video. All right, financial life hacks. Now everything that has to do with our financial system has to do with one particular thing, and that's your credit score and you might have heard this in shows in movies or just in general life around you that they'll say something like we got to run your credit um, and what they're basically looking for is one number a numerical summary of all your financial history basically they have set up a system where all your history when it comes to finances when it comes to loans credit cards when it comes to everything that you do all of those things boils down to just one number and that one number represents what type of person you are to them financially it also represents what kind of opportunities you get the higher your number the better it is for you now one thing that i want to make things clear for you is this system our financial system the reason i want to talk to you about it is because it's set up in a way to screw you over it's set up in a way to benefit rich people and to get money out of your pocket for the most part, you're going to lose money one way or another. You're going to pay money one way or another for these services, credit cards, for loans. The question is how much? How much are you going to allow yourself to get uh, screwed over by, basically? And also, this number determines not what you want, is what you qualify for. So when they talk about, I'm going to go buy a car, and they're going to run your credit, when that number comes back, determines how they're going to treat you, depends on what kind of deals you might be able to get. So... This number is set up to represent you financially. The problem is, like I said, the system is set up to not benefit you, and therefore they created a system where you could do good, 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 good on your financial history, and your number goes up slowly, and then you do one mistake, you make one mistake, and your number goes down a lot. So 10 good things, one small thing, bad, and it ends up going down. So it's like basically your report card for all your history in finances. But again, when you look at any of the stuff that I'm talking about, understand the system is set up against you. It's set up to take money away from you. So the smarter you are in terms of the system, the less they're going to take away from you. And in my case, in many cases with me, they don't like me. Why? Because they don't make money off of me. And I'll tell you why. All right. As we go along. So this number that I'm talking about is called your FICO score. All right, this FICO score ranges from 300 to 850. The higher your score, the better interest you get and the more opportunities you get. All right, and here are the numbers. Very bad credit is somewhere between 300 and 560. Bad is 560 to 650. Fair is 650 to 700. Good is 700 to 750. And excellent is 750 to 850. Obviously, being excellent is... is um, where you want to be, but even just being good, having good credit is going to give you a lot of opportunities to qualify for loans and qualify for specials that they might have. Now, again, the reason why I want to talk to you about this, because you usually don't learn for of this financial life system until you go through it, until you make mistakes, until you learn from other people's mistakes. And that usually means that they cost you a lot of money. So I'm going to, the reason I want to talk to you is because I've learned myself. Plus, I have a good head for this. I've been offered jobs before when it comes to working in financing because these numbers kind of, they it, it makes sense in my head. And to show you what how it makes sense in my head, my credit score for all my history is 834, which is really close to this number. It is nearly impossible to have the credit that I have, but it shows you that what I do works. So the credit score or your FICO score determines the loans that you could get. Uh, it determines what interest rates you'll be getting on a loan or on a credit card. Hiring process now, there are, there are places where you apply for a, for a position and they ask you what your FICO score is. And the reason is because they want to know how responsible you are. If you're responsible with your finances, it means that you're a responsible person and they might want to hire somebody who shows that responsibility. In own, starting your own business, if you want to get a loan to start a business, the same thing, that score is super important. When you get an apartment or a house and you want to open up, say, like Direct TV or the water bill, the gas bill, they'll run your credit to see if you're a responsible person. And even now, rental, uh, to rent an apartment, they're putting it on the applications because they want to know, hey, if you're irresponsible with money 
and you're going to pay them rent, they're not going to want somebody who has a low credit score because it means you make bad decisions with your money, which means you might not pay them the rent and that could disqualify you. I know I've done this firsthand because we own another property. Actually, it's in Anaheim. And when I get people who want to rent the house, that's one of the questions I ask and they have to prove it to me. So they show me their FICO score. And if it's low, I honestly, I eliminate them from the competition. Because if you cannot have a good FICO score, it means that you're irresponsible one place or another. Or a lot of times it's just bad luck. But honestly, I don't want to deal with you. I'd rather deal with somebody who has a good credit score because it shows that they're responsible with their credit score. And like I was saying earlier, this system is set up against you. Banks are not your friends. They're trying to set up traps to dis disguise that reward for people with little experience with all these financial systems and these credit cards because they want to hook you. They want to get you in. And the more mistakes you make, the more money it costs you, the more money they make, but the your credit score uh, will go down. So if you make mistakes, your credit score will go down. So um, this picture here kind of represents what I'm talking about. So first of all, this is the uh, picture that shows you, um, of course. All right, so this picture right here shows you um, a credit score, right? As you can see what I was talking about, obviously you want to be more here on the excellent side, but you know, good. Now I want you to look at this score, all right? So you have this scale of credit scores. Look how half of it here this way is very bad. And then this is bad and this is okay. So if you're looking at this system, only like one third of the system is where you get benefits. The other two thirds, you get screwed. Why? Why is it this way? Simple, because they made it this way. They set up a system where if you have, like if you should, you have 560, you should be okay credit. You're right in the middle, but it's not. It's bad, very bad credit or bad credit and okay credit. And here is where they make money off for you. Here's where they charge you a lot for interest. And the way they look at this number here is basically it represents you financially. And if you are applying for a loan and your credit score is here, like mine at the 834, they're going to give me the loan because they're going to feel very secure. Hey, with an 834 credit score, this person is going to give us our money back plus the interest that I pay for it. Um, so my interest rate go, is, will be a lower interest rate because they feel comfortable. They feel safe with me. But if you have a bad interest rate, first of all, they might just tell you straight out, no, you can't do this. You can't have this loan. We don't trust you. Your number is too low and we don't think you're responsible. Um, but they could also say, you know what, we'll give you the loan, but you're going to end up paying a super high interest rate. Why? Because that's the only way we'll trust you. We'll charge you a lot more money for the trust that you don't have because of your low credit score. And that basically means you end up paying a lot of money. Credit cards and loans, it's kind of like this, right? As you guys have seen this before, God, what the wrong with my computer? As you saw that little thing before, this is supposed to be like a mousetrap. And the idea is that they put something like cheese here for the rat. And when the rat gets under there, they pull the string. This falls off and the, and the basket falls on top. It's a trap. What are these traps? These coupons that they put out there. Hey, 25% if you open up a card with us today, you go to Macy's, Walmart, Target, and they'll have these signs where they're trying to sucker you in because it's really easy to charge. When they give you credit, it's easy. It's, it doesn't seem as real to charge things that maybe you shouldn't buy because you never actually took money out of your pocket for it. But you're going to add it up. They'll do zero interest for the first 12 months. But see, 12 months, nice and red, tells you, we're not going to charge you any interest. But what they won't tell you is something like, but on the first day of the second year, if you haven't paid us all our money back, we charge you all the interest. This happened to one of my friends. He bought a TV at Best Buy, and um, he was, and they told him, two years payment, no interest. So basically, we're going to let you borrow the money to buy the TV, and we will charge you zero dollars for interest. But in the fine print, it said that if by the end of the two years, you do not have the whole TV paid off on the first day of the third year, they charge you for all the interest that you would have gotten for the first two years. And I remember him, I had to let him borrow money because he was down to that last month before the end of the two years. And he called and they were going to charge like $400 of interest if he didn't pay, make his last payment before the end of the second year. And I let him borrow the money, he paid it off, and they didn't charge him anything. But they have these traps, and then you don't know they're traps. And then the reward points. They're like, oh, if you get this credit card, we'll give you reward points. For every dollar you spend, we give you a point. 
and then you could cash in the points later for all kinds of prizes or trips or stuff. But what they don't tell you is that these credit cards have extremely high interest rate. And if you um, get one of these high reward with these point reward points, then they're going to give you points and you're going to get something out of them, but they're going to charge you so much more for everything that you charge that they will make money off of you easily. So it's like with one hand, here's a little bonus. And with the other hand, they're collecting a lot of interest. Now, why do they hate me? It's because I have a rewards card. The difference is I don't put anything on there that I can't pay for. So if I'm going to buy something, say it's uh, a pair of shoes for 200 bucks, I charge them to put $200 shoes. It goes on my credit card. They give me the points for $200. But then I turn around and send them the $200 for the payment because I have the money. And therefore, my balance is zero. And if your balance is zero, they can't charge you any interest. So they don't get anything out of me, but they keep on giving me the points. And currently, I average somewhere around between $400 to $500 of points every year because I charge everything on this credit card because I want all the points. And at the end of the year, I accumulate them and they actually allow you to cash them in for money. And last summer, I cashed it in for like $425 or something like that. And it was over $400. So they gave me $400 to use their credit card. Now, do you think they like that? Of course not. But there's a few of me and there's a lot of people who don't know and they don't know how the interest rate and they just look at the points. Oh, I'm going to get points. I'm going to get points. I'm going to get points. But they're paying so much more for those points with high interest rate. So this number... This FICO credit score represents a lot of what you get, all right? So again, not your friends. So when you at your age are starting to get, uh, like, you know, if you get a job, you go open up a bank account, like a checking account or a savings account and start putting your money in there, they know this, they start sending you things in the mail, like, we are pleased to offer you your first credit card. And you get all excited and you don't bother to look at what interest rates they're giving you. You don't bother to look at that if you don't pay it at this time, this is how much we're going to charge you because that's what they want. They want you to be excited. They want you to go to the store and say, do I really need to buy this? And if you had to take a, a whole bunch of $20 bills in order to pay for something that you really don't need, you might like think otherwise, but if all you had to do is put the card in and not even sign sometimes, just a quick signature if you have to, it's really easy to say, yeah, yeah, yeah I do want this, all right? So bad credit score, how do you get bad credit? Because this is what they want. They want you with bad credit because it means that you're going to pay more for loans and for credit cards. So your interest on loans and credit cards will go high and they get more money to let you borrow that money, either in a loan or a credit card. First of all, or I'll get to credit cards later. All right. Your bill, pay your bills late or you're sent uh, to a collection agency. A collections agency is a company that basically buys the debt from the company you owe and they are very aggressive and they have the power to basically sue you and to get money out of your paycheck in order to get paid. So when you go to a collection agency or somebody says they're gonna take you to collection, if you go to collections, your credit score takes a huge, huge drop. So you could go from a good credit score to a very bad credit score by one collection agency situation. And I'll give you the example, um, my wife, actually I'll get back to it because there's something else that um, it goes through here. Having too much debt, like you charge too much, you owe too much money, that will make your credit card go down, your credit score go down not paying the minimum amount. So they send you, and this is another trap. You owe them $1,000 on your credit card and their attitude is, hey, uh, here's your bill for $1,000. The minimum payment is $20. And for you, you like, so if I send you 20, I'm good? Yeah, you're good. We're not mad at you. But if, um, if you only send us $20, then we charge you interest, which is about $30 for that month. So that means you only send them $20. They charge you $30 in interest because you have high interest. And essentially, by the end of the month, you, your, your, uh, your balance goes up because you paid them a 20 because that's all they said you had to send them. And then you, they charge you 30 because you're high interest rate, which means at the end of the day, you end up owing more money than what you paid for. So those 20 are just straight up interest. I'm having too many credit scores, and this is where people get in trouble because you go to Target, Walmart, Macy's, the credit cards from your bank. There's so many opportunities for you to get credit cards, and what they want is for you to have an open credit card. When they run your score, your credit score, a number pops up, and that determines how safe they feel they are with you. So they could give you a credit card with $2,000 as credit, or they give you a credit card with $100. But their attitude is, if we open up a little bit, then even if we give them a little bit, they'll spend a little bit and then we get money by charging them interest on that little bit. Now, what if you're young like you guys and you don't have any credit, any history in finance? 
actually having no credit is, is not as bad as having bad credit. When we talk, when we looked at that wheel from before, this one, when you look at this wheel, bad credit, when you have no credit, they start you off somewhere around right here. Like you have no credit, it starts you about right here. And then you you get your first credit card, you make your payments, maybe you get out DirecTV, because if you get DirecTV, they they put it on your credit and you make your every monthly bill and you slowly start building it and your number slowly starts going up. So having no credit starts you off right here. Having bad credit means you're over here somewhere and you slowly are going to have to make good decision over a long period of time for that number to go up and up. And you could go years. Smart decision. Smart decision. My number is going up. Oh, look, it's closer to 600. Damn, my number is getting better. I'm going to start qualifying. And then one bad decision and whoosh, all the way back down to here and start over again. Why? How is that fair that you make all these good decisions for years and then one bad decision takes you all the way back? It's not fair. And that's how they created it. They set up a system where it's not fair for you. All right. So how do you improve your credit if you do have credit, low credit? All right. So um, how to improve your grade? Pay more money than the minimum that you owe. So if they send you a bill saying you could only send them 20, send them 100. And that means that you'll pay your lo your credit or your loan off a lot faster and they give you bonus points basically on your credit score for paying it early. Keep on monitoring them. There are different monitoring systems. They say they're free, but a lot of times they're not. They'll give you the first month for free, and after that they want to charge you like $10 or so. But um, creditsesame.com, as of right now, if you set up an account, they will give you a free monitor, uh, free score. So you, you have to put the information in, creditsesame.com. Um, pay your bills on time. Every time you get a bill, pay it on time. If you don't show up, if you don't pay anything late, your credit score will slowly go up. Um, try to use less than 30% of your total credit limit. So if you get a credit card for $1,000, 30% of that is $300. Try not to go beyond $300. If you're always charging things and then paying a little bit, charging a little bit thing, but you're under the $300 of your $1,000 credit score limit, then it's going to give you points. All right, and keep old credit cards open. Basically, their idea is if you have a credit card, even if you don't owe any money, but it's open, it shows that you're responsible with that card, that you're not loading it up with extra. Now, credit limit, to make it clear, what it means is when you apply for a credit card, the company, whether it's Walmart, Target, Macy's, or a bank, will run your credit score and see how much money you make and how many bills you have, and they come up with this equation. And the basic equation spits out a number. This company feels safe by letting your credit limit for this card at Target be $500. So now you have up to $500 of credit at Target. Now the next day, let's say you go to Macy's and now you apply for a Macy's card. Well now, yesterday when you went to Target and they gave you the $500, they had that equation. Now Macy's has basically the same equation. You know, how much money you make, how many bills you have, how much credit you already have. And now when you go to Macy's the next day, now they're going to incorporate the $500 that Target let you borrow yesterday. So now your equation has changed. You have more credit. So then Macy's might say, you know what? We don't feel that comfortable giving you $500, but we can let you borrow. You could have $200 credit on your Macy's loan. And this, when you do that too many times, that's how your credit score goes down. So if you keep your credit limit low, like you don't owe too much money and you don't have too many credit cards open, your, um, your numbers should go up slowly. But again, one mistake and it goes down a lot. Interest rates are based on your credit score. So when you apply for a loan or for a credit card, they're going to give you an interest rate. How much money are we going to charge you to let you borrow this money either on a credit card or on a loan for a car, for a home, right? And that number, that one number that represents you, that determines what interest rates you get. And the lower your interest rates, the less they're going to charge you, all right? So what type of loans are there? All right, first loan is a car loan. All right, that's going to be probably the biggest first loan that you're going to get. Now, what's a typical car loan? A typical car loan is 60 payments, which means five years, you know, 12 months of payments, a year times five, that's 60. All right, but they could be as low as 36 months loan, which is uh, three years, which gets you the lowest interest rates, or they could go as high as 72, which is six years. And now they're even pushing it to 84 months, seven years, and those get the highest interest rates. So you'll go to a dealership to buy a car and they're like, oh, this will be your monthly payment. And you're like, that doesn't seem that bad. All right? It doesn't seem that bad. And the reason it doesn't seem that bad is because they took your car loan that should be at 60 months and they turned it into an 84 month loan, which means you're going to be paying that car for seven years. 
which means you're going to be paying them interest for seven years. And they're also going to charge you higher interest rates because it's 84 months. So you get the higher loan, you pay more, and then they even make you pay even more because of the higher interest rates. All right. So let's see what the car rate interest rates should look like. All right. If you have great interest rates, like red credit, uh, credit score will get you these one to two percent. Good. Three to five. OK. Six to nine. Bad interest rates, 10 to 13. Really bad interest rates, 14 to 20. Horrible. You're getting royally screwed. Interest rates, 21 percent or higher. So you could go as low as 1% because your credits, your, your FICO score is really good or as high as 21. And what oftentimes happens is you go try to buy a car, a new car, as a Toyota dealership, and they run your credit score. It's so bad. They tell you, I'm sorry, we can't sell you a car, but you still need a car. So where do you go? You go to one of those little car dealerships you see on the like on the main streets where they have maybe 50, 60 cars where they're all used. They have all kinds of different types of cars in one dealership. And guess what interest rates they charge? They charge these interest rates. Why do they charge such interest, high interest rates? Because basically they know you're only there because you didn't qualify for the better interest rates at a good dealership. So since you're desperate, they're going to be desperate to screw you over too. So let's see what does it look like if, say, you're buying a $25,000 car, all right? So $25,000 car is a, is a pretty nice car. So how much does it cost for the entire loan? If you get a 1% interest rate, you know, at 60 months, 60 months is the typical five-year loan, you're going to pay 427 months. That's $25,000 that you borrowed plus the $641 of interest that you pay. That's not bad, you know? 427, only $641 of the 25,000 that you borrowed, they, they charge you. If you go to from 1% to 2%, which is still a great interest rate, your, your monthly bill jumps to 438. You're like, that's not bad. It's only $11 more a month. Yeah, that's true. It's not bad. But that means over the five years, they're going to charge you now $1,292 interest rate. So you went from six four, they're charging you this much because you have an awesome 1% interest and you go to this one with 2%. Let's go down to 5%, all right? 5% is still a good interest rate, all right? Now your bill goes to 472 a month. They're like, all right, 427, 472, it's like, you know, $45, so it's not too bad. Well, when you start adding the payments of 472 times 12 months and five years, you're going to end up paying them back 28307 which means they're charging you $3,307 for the same car, the same you, the same dealership. What's the only difference? Well, here you have awesome interest rate because you have a credit score, and here you have pretty good one. So from awesome to pretty good goes from I'm going to pay them six forty one extra other than twenty five thousand dollars to three thousand dollars. All right, let's go to seven percent, four ninety five a month. You're going to pay them twenty nine thousand seven hundred two overall, and you're going to pay them an extra forty seven hundred dollars in interest. Just from going to 1%, 7%, again, same you, same car, same dealership, same everything. The only difference is when they do the contract, this one has this, and the other contract has this. And you pay them this much more money. But now let's say you don't qualify because your interest rate is bad. I mean, your credit score is bad. And they go to you go to one of those crappy dealerships. And now you get a used car. And by the way, used cars have typically higher interest rates. So simply because it's used, they're going to charge you more interest rates. So let's say that you get a 15% interest rate, $25,000 loan. Now your bill goes to $595 a month, which overall means you're going to pay them $35,685, which means you're going to give them an extra $10,685 of just interest because you're at this interest credit score. Like I said, this system is set up for that one number, that credit score, that FICO score to basically screw you over. And if you don't look at it from the very beginning, your credit score goes down from the very beginning, all right? Now, let's say that you do the 36 months, three years, all right, 2% or 72 months. So let's see what 2% looks like at 36. And 36 months, which is three years, you're going to pay 716 a month because it's three years, so obviously it's going to be higher, but you're going to give them 25778 all right? $778 more than the 25 you borrowed. But if you do six years at 2%, 369 a month, you're going to pay them 26921 So look at the difference, how much more you're paying them. $1,200 more, same interest rate, just because you went to a loan that's longer. 
And they're not going to explain this to you because the more money they make off of you, the better. All right. And look, if you have a used car, say $17,000 used car, which is that means you're getting a used car for $17,000 with 20% interest because they're screwing you over. You're doing four fifty dollars a month, which is very similar to this one for a brand new car. And you're going to pay so much more. But look, this is a $25,000 brand new car. This is a $17,000 used car. And yet you're going to end up paying like how much is this? Uh, four fifty. dollars It's basically $27,000 for a $17,000 loan. So because it's used and because it's high interest, you get a lesser car, used car, and you still end up paying them that much money. Now, for a house loan, it's a huge amount, right? For a house loan, um, I'm just going to see, show you the numbers. You can scan them because it's too much to explain in one place. But typically, the interest rates are very high. I mean, it's for 30 years, you pay a huge amount of money. I'll let you look at what it looks like for that. All right. Loans for school, like when you go to college or university, which are still worth it. Some allow you to pay them back after you're done with your degree, which is really cool. So you get a loan, you're able to go to your four years. And then once you get your degree, which allows you to get a really good professional job with a professional salary, then they're like, all right, it's time to pay off. And they start charging you. And it might take you three, four years, five years to pay off your loans. So who cares? So you start out that's 18 years old at college. You go to school for four years to get your degree in whatever it is. At 22, you get your job. Now you're having a professional job with professional salary. And now you're going to take that money and you're going to pay back your loan from 22 years to 26 years to 27 years. That still means at 27 years, you're going to be able to uh, keep your salary, but your loan is gone. And between the age of 27 years to you retire at 65, you still have your professional salary, but you don't have that loan anymore. Um, and that's a huge thing. So even if you have to go into debt to get into your credit card, I mean, to go get education, you should. Now, credit, how much do they give me? It's a base, uh, based on the combination of your FICO score, like what is your credit score? How much money do you owe? Um, the bank or business will determine how much credit they will give you. Again, bank credit cards are the best credit cards. If you're going to get a credit card, you should go to your bank. They're going to screw you over, but less. So... Here are some of the examples. If you have regular credit, you're going to get somewhere between 10 to 15 percent. If you have a gold or platinum card because your interest rate is really good, 9 percent. The rewards credit cards, because they try to reward you, the interest rate goes up. But again, if you're like me and you keep on getting the reward points, but you keep on paying everything on time, they don't charge you a penny and they give you all that money. Department stores like Target, Walmart, Macy's, those stores, they usually offer the highest interest rates. And therefore, you're going to let you borrow a certain amount of money to buy clothes or whatever, but they're going to charge you a lot. Um, old company Sears used to charge up to 25% in interest rate, which means you buy a washing machine there, it's going to cost you so much more when you pay it off at the end because they're charging you. And again, be careful for, for these 0% interest for 12 months. If you could pay it off in 12 months, it's great. You buy a refrigerator and they say, hey, basically, we're not charging you anything to buy this refrigerator on credit. As long as you pay it back before the 12 months. But if you don't, that first day of the second year, they charge you all the interest that they would have charged you month after month for that first year. And it could be hundreds of dollars. All right. Credit card uh, minimum payments and interest. Um, you will have your credit card that you owe with $1,000. Say with the, okay, This is basically to explain to you. So how much money do they make off of me when I get a credit? When I charge things up and pay them slowly? All right, so let's say you owe, you, that you, a credit card company gave you $1,000 credit, which means they're basically saying you could charge up to $1,000 on your credit. If you pay $100, then your credit limit, um, then that means you could still charge another $100 to get back to your limit of $1,000. And they're going to charge you 12% interest because your credit is okay. All right, your credit card company sends you a bill, says it's only have minimum payment is $15. All right, so just give us $15 and you're fine. So you pay the $15. Um, it will take you nine years, uh, 111 months to pay off your thousand dollars. Why? Because again, every time that you only send them the minimum, they charge you interest that month. And basically you pay a little bit, they charge you a little bit and it takes you a long time simply to pay a thousand dollars. All right. 
Same scenario, but you, your, your store card instead of a bank card, and they charge you 17% interest. So the bank charge you 12%, you go to Macy's, they charge you 17. If you pay $15 a month, like they're gonna ask you, because they're completely fine with this. As long as you send them the 15 bucks, they keep on charging you interest. It's gonna take you 17 years, 204 payments of $15 to simply pay $1,000, why? because you're gonna end up paying almost double that in interest. So $1,000 that they let you borrow and $1,000 of 82 of just pure interest because you took so long to pay them because you just gave them $15. So ultimately, and I'm sorry, it wasn't, you're gonna pay $2,000 of 82 of pure interest. Overall, it's gonna be $3,000 82 for a $1,000 credit score uh, loan. So basically they let you borrow $1,000, you spend it, you pay them 15 bucks a month, you end up paying them an extra $2,000 and they get $3,000 out of you for letting you borrow $1,000 because their interest rate is so high. And they don't want you to know this information because then they get to screw you over more, all right? Taxes, this is the way basically our system is set up when it comes to paying your taxes. Uh, and you hear that people say, I'm gonna do my taxes. It's usually like in February, March, or April. Every check you get when you get hired, they're gonna stay, take state taxes, they're going to take federal taxes, all right? And you've got income taxes and all kinds of different taxes, and you'll see your first one. You'll see deduction, deduction, deduction. So the following year, you will do your taxes, as people say, beginning maybe late January all the way through April 15th. What this means is your place of work, the place where you work, will send you something called a W-2. A W-2 is basically a financial paper that says how much money you made the, for the whole year at their company, how much money did they take in taxes for state, how much money did they take taxes for the federal. Basically, it shows in one paper how much you made, how much they took away from you. Then you will fill out this form. Now, for people who are young and who do not have a lot of credit stuff, it's called the 1040 easy and easy because it's an easy form to fill out. You could do it. You don't need to go to for to go to a tax repair. But as your forms get more complicated, you would definitely have to go pay somebody to do your taxes. So the tax repair will look up on their on the system of the government how much you're supposed to actually pay. So let's say you made twenty thousand dollars in your part time job this year. Well they look it up and it says in your part time job that you should have paid two thousand dollars. Well, they look at your W-2 and it shows that you paid $2,300. You know, every little paycheck, they took a little, a little, a little, a little. By the end of the year, you had given them $2,300, but you were only supposed to pay $2,000. So when you do your taxes and you fill all this information in, you send it to the government, the government will look at it and say, oh, yeah, we overcharged you by $300. And then they send you a check for your $300. And this is when people say, oh, I got this much for my taxes this year. It's not that you're getting money from the government. It's that they simply overcharged you and they're giving your money back. But unfortunately, it works the other way around. So same situation, you part-time, $20,000 a year. But when they look at your W-2, it only says that you paid $1,800, which means you set this up, the government's going to say, <clears throat> you still owe us $200. And they're not going to send you a check. Now they're going to send you a bill for $200 and you better pay or else. All right, last thing. Uh, and that's basically the situation when it comes to taxes. How much money did you make? How much were you supposed to pay? At the end of the year, you do the system where they essentially look up the number you're supposed to pay and then see what you paid. If you pay too much, they give you money back. If you pay too little, they charge you for that money. But no matter what, you're going to pay that money. What does co-signing mean? The last one, all right? Co-signing basically means that somebody's getting a loan, but they don't really qualify on their own. So they created a system, a very beneficial system to them, where you can go and co-sign for them, as in it's their loan, but you are taking financial responsibility as well. So basically saying it's not a loan to one person, it's a loan to two people. And between both of you, then they say you qualify and you could do this to get a loan for a car. You could do it to pay for direct TV or the water bill. Two names could go on there or a credit card, all right, or a service. And... Co-signing is very dangerous because basically you're going and saying, I'm co-signing for this person, and if they can't pay, I'll pay. But life changes. And I'll give you an example with my wife that I mentioned earlier. She had a friend whose dad, they moved into their first apartment, and they wanted to get direct TV. Well, the dad didn't qualify because he didn't have a lot of credit. They had just come from Mexico. So my wife, being the nice person that she is, she told her friend, hey, I'll co-sign, because at that point, my wife had already had a credit card, I'll co-sign with your dad, and that way you guys can qualify for a direct TV. 
And the dad was very responsible for about eight or so years. Every eight, for every month, for eight years, the dad of my wife's friend would get the bill for directly pay it, get it, pay it, get it, pay it. In fact, my wife was making a little bit of interest, a little bit of credit score because she was a co-signer. But after eight years, here, my, uh, my wife's friend decided to move back to Mexico with her family. And they all moved back except for her two older brothers. And the two older brothers stayed in the apartment and they kept the direct TV. Well, the two older brothers weren't responsible and they stopped paying the direct TV and the direct TV can't stop saying the bills. And there was a big bill accumulated and eventually they cut the service off. So you would think that'd be it. Well, no, because my wife co-signed for it. So the, those two brothers, they destroyed their dad's credit because their dad was the one who got the account. But their dad went to Mexico, so he didn't care. But my wife's credit was affected severely. I mentioned collection agencies, the, uh, the credit card company. I mean, the DirecTV, they sold uh, the money. I think it was like $700 that they owed um, to a uh, collection agency. And essentially what the collection agency tells DirecTV is, all right, this customer owes you $700. We'll give you $400 or $300. You get $300 and you give us their credit and then we go after them. And that's what they did. And eventually my wife is going to find out that she owes all this money for an account that she co-signed like nine years earlier. And my mom, my wife's credit score, it went down a lot. So we had to pay the collection agency the $700 in order for them to say, okay, this person is responsible now. And her credit score went up a little bit, but not to the point where it was before all this happened. So my wife, for being a nice person, co-signed. Give you another story. My one of my best friends, he was about to get in, he was about to get married. He actually got engaged to this girl when he was in his early 20s and the her car broke down. So they decided to buy a new car. She bought the car. He co-signed about maybe six months after they co-signed before they got married. She cheated on him. So this girl cheats on him. My friend finds out he they were already living together he kicks it out of the house they break their engagement they're done and she th he doesn't think about her again for years well the problem is the cosign of the car is still there there is no place on the on the contract where it says i'm co-signing for her right now but if she cheats on me i'm not responsible anymore you're responsible for the whole thing and she paid the the monthly payments for a couple of years but the car loan was five years. She didn't pay it all off. And at a certain point, for whatever reason, she stopped paying her bills. And the dealership kept on saying bill after bill after bill. It got so bad that eventually they took the car from her. But they still owed all the money of the loan. And apparently she didn't care. And my friend didn't have, he had no clue that this was happening until he went to go buy a house. And then when he went to go buy a house, he, they looked up his credit and his number was so low because of what happened with the car. And then he didn't understand why, you know, he pays his bills, everything on time. He's doing everything the right way. And that's when they find out, oh, you co-signed for this person years ago. And now they're screwing you over again. And essentially, my friend had to pay for the rest of the loan of the car and a thousand dollar fine in order to get his credit score high enough where he would qualify for the house. So he ended up paying, I think it was twenty four hundred dollars for the rest of the car loan, the thousand dollar fine simply to get his score back to a place where it would let him qualify to buy his house. Why? Because years ago, they co-signed. Don't co-sign for anybody. <laughs> Even if they're your really close friends, or in this case, my friend was engaged to the person. All right? To be honest with you, I have never co-signed for anybody. Not my brother, nobody. No, they haven't needed it, and I probably would for my brother and my parents, but my wife, of course, and probably my son, um, but I have never co-signed for any. I've been asked. And it felt really messed up to tell him no, but I'm like, I work hard at my getting my credit score up. I'm not going to let you make a mistake that's going to screw me over. So that's the end of the, the financial life hacks. There's way, way more that I could have told you, but this video is already long enough. All right. So if you have any questions, please let me know.